Okay, uh, the first question is, what do we do when we fall into sin and because of that, uh, we don't yakin with our shin? Yakin don't believe we lost doubt. Say it again. He said, uh, what do we do when we fall into sin and because of that, we don't have yakin with our shin? Okay, sir. So, when you fall into sin, you, you just go to repentance. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Ma asarra man istawara, wala wada fi liyum sabina mara." So, only one remedy is for the for the sin is to make istighfar and make tawbah. If you make tawbah, that is of course Allah will forgive you, and not only forgive you, but Allah will love you. Istighfar, you make sin, you just say Astaghfirullah. He may forgive you, he may not. But if you make Tawbah, for sure Allah will forgive you. And Tawbah has conditions. You have to leave the bad things you are doing. At the same time, that, that the time that you're making Tawbah, it's not possible you're making Tawbah for leaving some bad thing and still doing it. And you leave it, you leave it at that particular time, and you feel bad about doing it, and you have intention not to do it again. They said, if something belongs to somebody, you have to give it back to him or ask him for forgiveness. So, if you do that, Allah will forgive you. And Allah said, if you were then people who commit the sin and ask for forgiveness, I will take you away and bring some other people in your place. So human beings, they are not complete, but the best <coughs> among them those, whenever they make mistake, they correct themselves and go back to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. But don't depend on that. Don't say, so, Babu Tawbah, the, the door of Tawbah is open, so I can do whatever I want and go just make Tawbah. That is not safe because you don't know the time you're doing it, you will pass away in that particular time. The ulama, they say, whatever you don't want to die with it, don't do it. Because you see people, they die in any actions. So you have to be careful doing the bad things because it's the sign of being away far from Allah Taala. But only your remedy, you make tawbah. In Allah, you have the tawabina, or you have the Allah loves those who make repentance and those who clean themselves from the bad things. <coughs> How do we... Uh, the next question is, how do we increase uh, the love of our worship? If you love Allah Taala, and you love the Sheikh for the sake of Allah Taala, you follow the way, that is, love good people is sign of Iman. Because it's condition of your iman, even to love your brother, Muslims. So, if you love him for the sake of Allah Tabarak wa Taala, Allah love you for that. So, to love a sheikh and you love good people is the part of loving Allah Tabarak wa Taala. <coughs> question is, uh, how do we gain yakin, especially at work or in family members, uh, how do we gain yakin with Allah when people are against us? What can we do, Shaykh? Is there any way we can do? All the, all the ibadah, all the good things you do, it increases your iman. So the more your iman increase, the more you have yakin. You make salat to increase your iman. You make Tasbih, you make zikr, you make wazifa, you make all your awrad, you make sadaqa, you listen to Quran. All this for increasing your yaqeen to Allah wa ta'ala. Because the more your iman is strong, the more your yaqeen is strong. Sayyidina Ali, he said, He said, even they remove the cover between people and <coughs> Yawm al Qiyamah. The last day, his yaqeen will never increase because he gets to the top of yaqeen. So the more your iman gets to that, 
you will get that yaqeen that remembering Allah tabarak wa ta'ala connecting yourself like one of the sahabi at Hanzala one time he came to Hanzala they call him Ghasilul al-Malaika because when he passed away Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said the Malaika they wash his body just sahabi one time he came to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu and he told him that Nafaka Hanzala, He's, he said Hanzala is a hypocrite. Said Abu Bakr, tell him why you say that. He said because I realize whenever you we stay around Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he remind us the last day and the hellfire and paradise, we go into the point that we look like we we see it, we facing all this reality like they have yakin on it. He said, but whenever we go back to our family and our business, we forget. Said now Abu Bakr, said that is not only you. Let's go to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When they come to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Hanzala, he asked the same question. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, yes. لو دمتم على ما تكونون عندي ومع الذكر لصافحتكم الملائكة في الطرقات وعلى فرشكم لكن يا حنزلة ساعة فساعة ساعة فساعة. If you would were staying in the situation you will be around me and with zikr mentioning Allah even the angel they gave salam to you on your bed on your road going to straight going going to walk or anywhere they will face you that means you will get not only get yaqeen about them but you will see them but why you don't get to that because sometimes you mention sometimes you forget so you want to get to yaqeen, keep mentioning Allah wa ta'ala, hold your deen, keep your awrat, try to know much about Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and follow the way of Prophet and way of the Sahaba, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> Parents or friends who are against us in Tariqah, how do we deal with it? You know, to be nice and treating your parents in a nice way, that is part of the Tariqah. Because the part, one of the conditions of this Tariqah, you treat your parents in a nice way. And Sheikh Ahmed Tiyan said, Man lam yabarra walidehi la yusaru lahu suluku tariqatina. Treat his parents the nice way. They they not they not gonna make it easy for him to make suluk to, to this tariqa. Suluk in this tariqa is your journey to the tariqa. If you don't get to the journey, you don't reach. So being nice with them, that is the part of the tariqa and is part of Islam, because when jahadakil tushrikubimari shrikubimu fala tutehuma wasahu ma fi dunya maarufan. Allah said, even your parents, if they are not Muslims. Even if they, they are mushrikin, they worship idols, and you Muslim, you have to be nice with them, but don't follow them when they call you to something wrong. And the tariqah is nothing but, it's, it's just increase your iman, it's part of maqam ihsan. If your parents, maybe they don't understand it, the real understanding, you keep do your tariqah, but keep your relationship with your parents. Imam Junaidi, he said one time his father asked him to do something and his sheikh asked him to do something and he followed his sheikh and he think all the barakah he get, he get it from that. But make sure the real sheikh, they will never help you to fight your parents or to disrespect your, your parents. <coughs> Can we tabaruk or tajjib with them together? You know, the Mashaykh, they said, if you take tariqah for tabaruk, you can make tabaruk with any sheikh. But if you take sheikh, that is your sheikh of tarbiyah, you shouldn't go to any sheikh because they say you knock one door, they open all the doors for you. Il zambaban wahidan, tuftah lakal abwaamu. تواضع وقت على واحد 
Lali Tahda Alaka Rikabu, Tahda Alaka Rikabu. Humble yourself in front of one God is Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Don't do it for people to humble themselves in front of you, but they will do it for you. Keep knocking one door. Don't do it for them to open the door for you, but they will open all the doors for you. Likewise, this is Tariqah, even the Tariqah Tijaniya. When Shah Ahmad Tijani said, if you take the Tariqah, you don't go to another awliya. It's not mean you don't respect them, because it's part of the Tariqah to respect all the awliya of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. But the, all the Barakah, you will have it in this, so you don't need to go everywhere. Because they said, if you want to dig wells, you start to dig well from here. Tomorrow you go there, you don't have nothing. فإن رقيب الالتفات لغيره يقول لمحبوب السراية لا تسري. شاه ده يسأل إف يو هاف شاه أن يو لوك بيهين. The secret will tell not to go to you. So you don't have the secret of the شاه because you go looking behind. And if you go to another, maybe you don't even get benefit from that. What happens if we want to leave the tariqah, but later on we want to continue to be in the tariqah, means changing our mind? Do we need to renew our initiation with the shaykh? Anyway, to renew our initiation, that is good any time, even if you don't have that in your mind, because that is like what Prophet Sallallahu said, Jiddidu imanakum. So many murid, many good people, whenever they meet their shaykh, they ask for tajid, just to make sure that they, they keep the connection and they get the baraka. Anyway, this tariqah is agreement between you and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. If you have to fiqh, you take it. You don't think about to leave it. Because I don't think any Muslim will think about leave istighfar, leave salatu ala nabi, leave la ilaha illallah. This is everybody doing it. What's the difference between you and other Muslim who do istighfar, do salatu ala nabi, do la ilaha illallah? Only you make it your, your you make it obligation on yourself. When you make it obligation, you have to keep it. When you full nuzurahum, that's what Allah said. If you have nizr that you, uh, you want to do something good for Allah wa Taala, you have to keep it. You have to keep it always. But if you have any problem with that, you can ask for tajid. Even if you don't have problem, you have you can ask for tajid just to renew your iman and to keep your yourself in the right way. <coughs> Uh, before I continue, anyone would like to ask any question? Anyone pertaining to Tarika or Tasawwuf? <coughs> I continue. Okay. Uh, since, uh, rephrase again uh, this question, since we can only have one Murabbi in our Tarika, can we serve other Sheikh in the same Tarika? How do we treat other Tijani Shuyuk? You have to treat all the all the all mankind. You have to treat them in the nice way. All mankind. You have to treat mashayikh, non mashayikh, even non Muslim. You have to be nice with them because this is the way of Islam. Husnul khuluqi, ma'akulli makhluk. You have to have good minus with all the creation of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The mashayikh they say if you have good minus with everybody, but you don't have it with one cut, you don't have good minus yet. <coughs> Imam Ghazali, with all the good things you know about him, when he passed away, somebody saw him in the dream. He asked him, what did Allah, what Allah do with you? He said, Allah take me to paradise. For why? Because he said one time I was writing and one fly, when I drink from my, my ink, and I keep quiet until he finished from that, Allah have mercy with me. And you, you know that is, you refer that to the hadith, the sound hadith Prophet Sallallahu mentioned, a guy who was traveling in the desert and he was thirsty and he go and find to the, the well and find water and drink. After that he say the cat was about to die of, of thirsty and he go and take water and give it to, to, to that dog and Allah take him to paradise. So you have to be nice with everybody. You have to be nice, particularly with Muslims, with your neighbors, either they Muslim or they no Muslim, because Prophet said, Mazale Jibrilu Yusini Bijari Bijari Hatta Rana to Anna U Sayuri, so you were Suhu, Sayuri Suhu. He said, Jibril keep asking me 
to be nice with my neighbor until I believe that if somebody died, the neighbor is going to inherit him. So, and one time he was standing, long time after that when he came, Abdullah ibn Umar narrated, they, he asked the Sahaba, do you know why I was standing? They said no. He said, because Jibreel was asking me to be nice with my neighbor. He used to be nice with his neighbor, neighborhood, even the Jew among them. He treated them nice way. You have to be nice with all the Ummah to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ummah to Ijaba and Ummah to Da'wah. Those they accept and those they still didn't accept. Because from our action, we have to prove from our action to let non-Muslims know that our relation, our religions is the religion of peace, of religion of love, of, is the best religions. Because you cannot say that I have the best way and you have, you know, worse did. If you have best way, you have best book, your prophet is the best prophet, you learn is your teacher is the best teacher, you have to prove that from your actions. From your action people, they will know what you're saying is good or is not. Because it's very easy to say, we are good people. But your action will prove that you are good or not. The way you deal with the people. <coughs> Prophet said, إِنَّكُمْ لَا تَسِعُونَ النَّاسَ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ فَسِعُوهُمْ بِأَخْلَاقِكُمْ You can't share everybody with your belonging, but it's possible for you to share with everybody with your good minus. Good minus can give everybody, everybody can have you know, space in good minus. Prophet Allah said, He can have good minus. Many people, they believe Islam, nothing because, only because the good minus you, they see with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu To be in a nice with the, your brother Muslim. Innamal mu'minuna ikhwa. Allah said, the believers, they are the brothers. So this is the real brotherhood. But you still have to be nice with others. If you be nice with all the Muminin, of course, the ulama of the ummah, you have to respect them. Because Prophet Sallallahu said, لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ لَمْ يَرْحَمْ صَغِيرَنَا وَلَمْ يُوَقِّرْ كَبِيرَنَا وَلَمْ يَعْرِفْ لِعَالِمِنَا It's not among us. We don't have mercy for, for the young among us. It's not among us who don't have respect for the elders among us. It's not among us who don't have tawqir and respect for the, the scholar. So you have to give respect to all the ummah. You have to give respect, mercy for the young, respect for the elders, respect for the ulama, respect for all mashayikh, practically the mashayikh of all the tariqah, the mashayikh in your tariqah, because you are in the one where they, they look alike uh, your neighbor, you have to give them the same respect you give to the to the to the sheikh, the respect you give to your sheikh, give to other sheikh because you you want other people to respect your sheikh. You have to respect the sheikh also, respect everybody. And Sheikh Ibrahim radhiAllahu he said in Tafsir, when the kuffar of Mecca said, why why Allah didn't send to to to, to them angel, and Allah said, ولو جعلناه ملكا لجعلناه رجلا ولا لبسنا عليه ما يلبسون. Even if we send angel to to you. We will make him in the form of human being. He will act like you. From that, Sheikh Ibrahim said, from that you can know that even you can see a person in the form of human being, you think this human being, but it's not him. Sometimes he can be somebody you know. You know him, you see his face, this is such and such, and it's not him. Maybe he's an angel. Sometimes the good people, they come to you like nothing. Test from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, so you have to respect everybody you see because you can't see even some somebody begging in the street. You think he's nothing, but he's good people. He's one of the big awliya. Allah bring him in the, that you know that situation just to test people. So be nice with everybody and put everybody where Allah put him. Nazilun nasa manazilun. If you see big per, big person. You have to respect him because this is Allah. Allah give him. If you have to see somebody, all men respect him, because Allah, Allah respect him until they give him 
one of the name of Allah, Al Kabir is Allah. But all they call him, all men they call him Kabir, all women they call Kabira. That's Allah give him one of the title of Allah wa Taala. If you respect him because his age, Allah will keep you safe until you get to his age and bring somebody to give you res the same respect. So we have to respect everybody. We have to be nice with everybody. We have to be nice with all the creation of Allah wa Taala. Because they are creation of Allah wa Taala. You don't understand why Allah bring them here. Allah didn't create anything for nothing. فحسبتم أنما خلقناكم عبسا وأنكم إلينا لا ترجعون. Yes, you know, someone is against your chef is disrespect that. You have to show the respect for your sheikh. That that's it. Because if you love your sheikh, you have to love people who love them against people who against your sheikh. Because that is test for you. Because if you follow somebody who against your sheikh, any time he can take you away from the sheikh. So if you have real sheikh that you know that you can benefit from it, don't follow somebody who will take you against that way. Because that will. You know, spoil your relationship with your sheikh. Thank you, sheikh. The next question is: Can you explain more on the numbers in zikir, like yalati one to nine? What is the wisdom and reality behind? Anyway, we learn from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam numbers, because we see in the hadith, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you say Subhanallah wa bihamdihi hundred times, Allah forgive your sin, even if it's Big. So from that you see numbers, and you say La ilaha illallah wa dhuwla sharika lo lo mu kulo alhamdu yahiyu to ala kulli shayin khadir. Prophet mentioned if you said it ten times, if you said it hundred times, nobody will have better than what you do except somebody who do what more than what you do. From that we take numbers, and when Sayyidina Aisha said, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Khairul a'mali adwa muha wa in qala, the best of it is what is consistent, even if it's limited, even if it's small. When they mention small, it's consistent, that means you do it every day. Like you do la ilaha illallah every day hundred times. You do it astaghfirullah hundred times. Even in Hadith Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, inni layughanu aliyya wa astaghfirullah bayna al-yawmi wa layla mi atmara. He said, they, they cover me, cover my heart sometimes. And I ask Allah for forgiveness hundred times. In another hadith, seventy times. So from that we know numbers. The Prophet Sallallahu always, if he, if he pray, he used, to, he used to read the prayer three times, most of the time, seven times. So this is number we take it from that. And if you go to the ulama, Allah open the Guz Ilham and give them the way to know the number of any zikr. Because if you get, if you hear that they say Latif is 129, because that is equal, the word Latif equal 129. Because Lam is 30, Ta is 9, Ya is 10, Fa is 80, that is 129. From that you can use it for that. But don't use what you don't know, what you don't have permission. That is, if you want to get real baraka from reading, and you have to do what you have permission for it. Because if you go to the, the pharmacy now, the doctor will give you medicine. You're not going to go just get to the, go to the pharmacy and just take any medicine and take any number of pills that you, you want. You do that, you can't kill yourself. You can't hurt yourself. The doctor will tell you, take this medicine. Take it two in the morning, two in the night. After three days, leave it. After seven days, leave it. So the Mashaikh, they are the doctor of the, the, the Ruh. Also, if they give you a certain number, it's because Allah showed them the significance of the number, what you can benefit from that number. Because they said, Kullu sirrin sirruhu fi adadihi. Every secret, the secret in the number. Khasiyatu fi ma'nahu. تصريفه في مختداه وإجابته على قدره المتساهل.
He said the real tarbiyah is to take the ruh away from everything that is not Allah and take him take it back to Allah Taala in Zahir and in Batin. This is the work of all the Mashaikh. What they what they should do is to help people to know Allah Taala, to help people to have connection with Allah Taala. So if you are in the tariqah and the sheikh has the way of the tarbiyah, take it from the sheikh <coughs> because this word is part of tarbiyah. Awrat of Tijaniya is part of tarbiyah. Because Shaykh Ahmed Tijani, he, got, he has guaranteed from Prophet Sallallahu whoever keep <coughs> his word, he will never die without knowing Allah Taala. So hold your word. Whatever you want to use after that, use it from the permission from your sheikh. The way the sheikh put it for you, that's the way you have to do it to get benefit. But don't do it for anything except Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Sheikh Ryan, the Lord, he said, you don't have the murid, you don't have to make tarbiyah for anything, just to make it for Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. If you do that, whenever you have Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, you know Allah deserves the time you spend to get to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. <coughs> I continue <coughs> one happening question that you like to ask as it was can you remind us the importance of uh Shay Dhanya's rule adapt and especially for <coughs> No Ruhul Adab is uh, <coughs> is the book that is even on our side, before Murid make Tabia, they used to just teach him Ruhul Adab. Ruhul Adab, for you, for your journey to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, it's like you traveling, you have your itinerary. That's it. You, you know how to deal with your Sheikh, you know how to deal with your Nafs, you know how to deal, to deal with the creation of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala because lil nafsi aibun lil fu'ad aibun lil ruh aibun laysa fihi raib Shaykh he said in ruh al adab he said the nafs have some false bad things the heart also the ruh had it and he said wa lasta takhlusu min al afati illa bi shaykh al arif in tuwat you will never save from this false Except if you come to the Sheikh who is Arif Billahi Tabarak wa Ta'ala and you follow him to his way, Allah will help you to get this understanding. In Ruhul Adab, he teach you how to respect the Sheikh, how to be with him, how to respect your time, how to, uh, to make your awrad, how to do it the proper way, how to make istighfar, how to fight your nafs, how to respect all the creation of Allah. فَإِنَّ ذَا الْخَلْقَ عِبَادُ اللَّهِ فَلَا تَدُرْ أَخِي عِبَادُ اللَّهِ This creation, they are seven of Allah. So make sure you, you don't harm any one of among the creation of Allah. So this is Ruh al-Adab. He teach you Adab. How to have Adab. Because everything, the door of everything is Adab. Al-Adab al-Adab. Ya the Salik, if you know who Babun the Kuli Salik, Abraham said, Who you want to take journey to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, make sure you have Adab because Adab is the, 
is the door for anybody who wants to enter to the Hadra of Allah Taala. If you have adab, you reach, you get what you want in the short time. So may Allah help all of us to give us adab first with Allah Taala. Adab with Rasulullah Sallallahu Adab with Shariat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Adab with the Quran. Adab with the Hadith Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Adab with the Awliya Allah Salihin. Adab with the Ikhwatina. We have we need adab even among our brothers. Even you need adab dealing with your children, with your wife, with your brothers. All this will. Is, will would recommend it to do because you do it you Allah will reward you and Allah Amen. will help you and make it easy for you for your journey. So the next question is uh, when we were do, when we are doing wajifa is it permissible for us to visual uh, the face of our shit for concentration? They yeah, are all that for you to help you, like what Sheikh said in Ruhul Adab, Wasahdiranna Sheikha Kal Murabi Kadha Ka Sheikhu Biduni Raibi. All what we need for that to, to, to get to the point that we be in the present with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he's the real Sheikh. <coughs> the next question, Sheikh, when we enter into the presence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, do we also have to leave the shape behind, like how Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left Jibril as who was his guide? And how will we know if we have entered or getting close to enter into Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala present? You know, if you say Allah is present, Allah is everywhere. So, Imam Jiraidi, he has a murid. One time, the murid, after he makes suluk, he met Imam, he didn't look to that. He didn't pay attention to him. And he said, because he was looking to Allah, now he find Allah. And Imam Junaid is telling him, you see me one time, it's better for you to say Allah a thousand times. You know, that is not easy to understand, because what we need is Allah. But he wants to show him, if you really know Allah, Allah can manifest it in anything. So his manifestation with that complete Sheikh is different from his manifestation for anything other. So if he leave the sheikh because he reached Allah, he will go to deal with other things also, it's not Allah, Tabarakut So, you need adapt when you reach, you need adapt when you back. You want any questions? Um, how to increase belief in Allah? <laughs> how to increase belief in Allah? You follow the orders. You follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam bring the message from Allah subhanahu wa taala to tell you to pray. So if you pray, you remember Allah. Aqim salat nizikri. Allah said. Pray to remember me. So if you're remembering Allah, that, that will increase your Iman. If you're listening to Quran, also that will increase your Iman. If they read to them the sign of Allah, the ayat of Allah, that will increase their Iman. So the best thing to increase your Iman is to follow, to do good things. And, and avoid bad things. Because all the bad things it decrease the Iman. Prophet said, La is nizani hina yezni wa huwa mu'minu. Wala yasriq hina yasriq wa huwa mu'minu. Wala yasriq hina yasriq wa huwa mu'minu. Even the person who commit adultery in that particular time is not mu'min, is not a believer. So that means that will decrease his Iman. The thief, the, thief, the time he stealing, also, in that particular time, is not moving. That means that action decreases his iman. The person who drinking wine, in that particular time, is not moving because if he, iman was around, present with him, he would never do that. So, he, iman 
go away and that's why he able to do it. It's not mean that he's not, he's not believer, but in that particular time he's not moving. So we have to be careful from doing anything that will take our iman away. So good deed, if we say good deed, that what Allah says is good, what Prophet Salah says is, is good. It's not just what you think about your, your mind or your friend, they say this is good because it's nice. No, good, what Allah says is good, but what Allah says is bad. So you follow that and avoid the opposite. <laughs> Back to the Tarbiya question, Shay. someone is asking, like, you know, living in Singapore, we have a very hectic schedule. So doing Tarbiya Zikir, additional Zikir, is a very uh, tough challenge. Uh, how do we organize our time? And what's your advice for us? All what you need is to organize your time. Because the time you make, you, you're going to listen to music in the daytime. Some people, they listen to music one hour time. One hour. There's no zikr that they give you that more than one hour in your, in, in, your, in, your, in, your, in your beginning. Of course, maybe if you, if you grow, you can go to the point that you connect yourself with Allah wa ta'ala. Even when you are working, when you are with people, you connect your, 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 your heart with Allah wa ta'ala. But we have to have intention in all our actions because your work is part of ibadah. Your work is part of tarbiyah. Your work is part of Islam. If you have intention, your ordinary, ordinary good work can be ibadah that Allah will reward you for it. You go look for a job to help yourself, to help your family, to help your society. This is part of Iman. Allah will reward you for that. So don't think that is not part of din. This is part of your din also. But all what you need to organize, to organize yourself. If you organize yourself, you can do everything. Your salat, how many minutes you need? Maybe seven minutes. You can pray the zohar after seven minutes. All your prayer in the daytime is not more than one hour. Also, if you organize yourself, all your zikr, even if you are strong man or woman, all your zikr in the daytime is, it can not be one hour and 30 minutes. So if you organize yourself, you can do all this in the time and still go sleep and do your work and do your family's, you know, issue. Anyone else any question? Yes, sir. Now, question. Uh, Mawlana Shibram Yas mentioned in his book, Adab, Walazimu Kudur how do we have presentation? Like, if you do something that is important for you, now if you walk, you have something you have to finish, you concentrate on it, right? Because you don't want to make mistake. You make mistake, your boss will tell you, oh, this is not good, go make it again. So if you do your zikr, remember that you do it for the sake of Allah. Remember that zikr that you're doing, it's not just something you just say, but it's connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you read Fatiha, for you to have hudur, you start your zikr before you say astaghfirullah. Remember that you do it because Allah said, when istaghfiru rabbakum, ask me for forgiveness, I will forgive you. So you doing it, asking for forgiveness. You doing it, following the order from Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. You concentrate for what you're doing. Do it in the, the proper way. Before you say, you, meant, you, you say, La ilaha illallah, mention that Allah said, mention me, I mention you. And if you're talking to, to your parents, you will never talk to him and go talk to somebody else. Disrespect. Because no way your parent ask you for something and you take phone and talk and talk to him one word and go to your phone. That is not respect. So that is not hudur. You have to have to be present. <coughs> Before you say la ilaha illallah, remember that Allah said, mention me, I mention you. And you say it, don't just say it, but say it mentioning Allah wa ta'ala and follow Allah wa ta'ala for saying that. When you make salat ala nabi also remember that Allah said, 
صلى عليه وسلم تسليما. so you do it to follow that way and you be like you are front of prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم making your salat. that all that will help you for hudur. thinking about the meaning of the word will help you for that hudur. ولازم الحضور والسكونة سكونة you be you know you you come down and do it sometime sometime you have excuse but if you able to to stay and face the qibla for your zikr do it if you have excuse you have excuse but you do it that way is more baraka even facing qibla for your azkar is more baraka also because al qibla sayyid al majalis the master of all the sites كذلك خلوة تعين تعين حينا even to be alone sometime شيخ أحمد تجاني say if you try to be alone every day even the time you do your أوراد لازم you will see بركة in all in all your life it's not just it's not mean خلوة go forty days خلوة that is not for everybody but the time you do your work you can be alone that will help you for hudur also to help you for concentration help you to do it uh, the better way mm -hmm. <coughs> thank you uh, the next question is on yakin uh, there are a few quite similar questions I rephrase everything so the question is uh, how do we gain yakin when we lose something that we love like wealth family members the loss of our loved one so how do we yakin behind everything that is Allah? If you believe in Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, you will have that. Everything is from Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. But that is to accept, to accept what Allah has decided for you. That is, that is not yakin, that is taslim. You know, you, ac you, you accept what comes from Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Some people, they make tough with. وَأُفَوُّدُ أَمْرِي إِلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَصِرُ بِعِبَادِ You relate, you are saying everything to Allah, even before anything happened. That is tough with. Shaykh Ahmed Al-Tijani said, if you read that dua, Allahumma alaykum awari, many of you know it, وَبِكَ مَلَاذِ وَإِلَيْكَ الْجَاءَ وَعَلَيْكَ تَوْكُلِي وَبِكَ ثِقَتِي وَعَلَى حَوْلِكَ وَقُوَتِكَ اَعْتِمَادِ وَبِجَمِي مَجَارِ أَحْكَامِ that is rida, ma Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. You have to, to have to get to rida, whatever Allah decided, you accept it. This is another level. But taslim, you don't want this to happen, but after it happened, you accept it. This is from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. When Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when his son passed away, he said, al-aynu tadma, wal-qalbu yahzan, wa la naquru illa ma yurtiho. He said, um, the, the heart is upset, the eyes is crying, but I will never say except what is please Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. So from that we learn, if you know how Prophet deal with the certain things, we, you will learn from that how to deal with the things. That's why we need to know more about Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about his life. So that will help us to accept from Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. If you know that also, if you be patient, Allah will reward you. And without patience, if you don't have patience also, nothing will change. And if you have patience, Allah will reward you. If you know that, in Allah sabirina, if something happened to you, you have patience, Allah will reward you for that. And Allah will be with you, so you have patience, because you, you know that Allah will be with you. What you lost, you need it for something. Anything you need it for, Allah can do. Allah is better than that. And if you just have patience, Allah be with you and help you. That's why Prophet Sallallahu said, the believer, anything happen to him is good. If it's good things, you thank Allah, Allah will reward you for that. If it's bad things also, you be patient, Allah will reward you for that. Uh, next question here, someone is asking, uh, we know that Rabi Awal is the man of the Prophet Sallallahu Shaban is also known as the man of the Prophet So, what is the secret in these two months and the difference? Anyway, 
that that hadith said the Shaban is the month of Prophet, that is not sound hadith. Anyway, Rabbi Owen, you know his month of Prophet because Prophet was born in that, and in that month. And Shaban, we know Prophet used to fast in Shaban more than any other month except Ramadan. Because he said Shaban in between Rajab and Ramadan and people they forget about it. So they don't care about it. That's why him he loved to fast in that month because they, they record all the all the actions, all the deeds, they will record it and give report to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. He say he want his report go to Allah when he's fasting. So from that you can understand that is Shaban is also month of Prophet, but that hadith Shaban uh, Ramadan Ukada. Ramadan Sharumati, Rajab Shahrullah Shabanu, Shahri, Ramadan Sharumati is not sound hadith. But anyway, Prophet used to fast in Shaban more than any other months except Ramadan. New question come in here. We said, uh, we hear the quotes that I think you mentioned before. At the beginning, you see the name of the tariqah, at the end, you only see Allah. And we have met people who are good people but they don't come from tariqa is it necessary to have tariqa to witness Allah Shaykh Ahmed Siyani radiallahu he said to have a sheikh is not obligation for any individual person except to have a sheikh a sheikh of ta'lim <coughs> you have to have the sheikh to teach you he'll teach you Quran to know what is lawful, what is not lawful, how to pray, how to do this. Those, all the ulama, they know that is obligation. But to have the sheikh of tariqa, the sheikh, al murabbi, that is, he said, if you, if you know that the sick person, he have to go to, to doctors, of course you say that is, is obligation for everybody because people that are sick. Because whenever you love something that's not Allah, because of the sickness in your heart. Whenever you follow something that is not what Allah wants you to do, that is sickness from your heart. So if sick person need to have doctors, person he need to have a sheikh who guide him to the right way. <coughs> Yeah, last question, sorry. Uh, is there anything we, that we, we should do or we can do in Ramadan? There is no special will do for Ramadan. But <coughs> Prophet Sallallahu said, فَاسْتَكْسِرُوا فِيهِ مِنْ أَرْبَعَةِ خِصَارٍ خَصْلَتَانِ تُرْدُونَ بِهِمَا رَبَّكُمْ وَخَصْلَتَانِ لَا غِنَا بِكُمْ عَنْهُمَا وَأَمَّا الْخَصْلَتَانِ لَتَانِ تُرْدُونَ بِهِمْ لَا غِنَا بِكُمْ عَنْهُمَا فَتَسْأَلُونَ اللَّهَ الْجَنَّةَ وَتَعُوذُونَ بِهِ مِنْ النَّارِ وَأَمَّا الْخَصْلَتَانِ لَتَانِ تُرْدُونَ بِهِمَا رَبَّكُمْ فَشَهَادَةُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ فَتَسْتَغْفِرُونَ سلمان الفارسي mentioned that prophet he gave khutbah the last day of Shaban in that khutbah he said it close to you coming to you شَهْرٌ عَظِيمٌ مُبَارَكٌ شَهْرٌ فِيهِ لَيْلَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٍ شهر جعل الله عليكم صيام يومه فريضة وقيام ليل يتطوع من تقرب فيه إلى الله بأداء خصلة من الخير كان كمن أدى فريضة فيما سوى ومن أدى فريضة فيه كان كمن أدى سبعين فريضة فيما سوى وهو شهر الصبر والصبر سواب الجنة وشهر المواساة وشهر يزاد في رزق المؤمن فيه من تقرب فيه إلى الله من فطر سائما غفر الله له وأتقه من النار in that hadith, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in that khutbah, he said, ask Allah four things in this Ramadan. First, make, ask, beg a lot. You know, you set these four things a lot in Ramadan. Two things, you please Allah with it. Two things, you will never be satisfied without it. The two things you please Allah with, two things you never be satisfied without it, you ask Allah for paradise and you ask Allah for Allah for you. You ask Allah for paradise, you ask Allah protection from hellfire. 
The other two things that you do to please Allah, for shahada to Allah ilaha illallah, wa tasawwiruna, you make shahada, shahada to Allah ilaha illallah, like you mean, you can make la ilaha illallah a lot, and you ask Allah for forgiveness, wa tasawwiruna. So that means in Ramadan, you can make tahleel, la ilaha illallah a lot, you can make istighfar a lot in Ramadan. Beside of that, you know, Ramadan is shahr. Quran, you read Quran, it's any good things you do in Ramadan, even if it's not farida, Allah will consider it as farida. Any farida you do in Ramadan, Allah will consider it as like 70 farida. So, it's, if it's for the business, the, all the businessmen, they will, they will be ready. If they say this is the months that you have business, if you, pay, if, if, you, if you sell anything, you have 70, all the businessmen, they will be ready for that. <coughs> the, so this is the, the business for the people who love Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Mm. That's why the Arifin Billah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, they love it. Because you said if you risk the moon if you allow it increase your risk in this month. What if you do one, Allah pay you seventy. So we have to try our best. That's what Prophet says. Ya Bari al Khair Akbil, Waya Bali al Shari Edbir, who love good come, who love bad go because it's not the month of bad things. <laughs> Um, this is the last question. She has answered many questions. The last question she has is uh, I have a few quite similar questions on Ziara Madina Bay. I rephrase a bit. So she has this uh, person who sent, he said, uh, young lad, he said, uh, only hear the good things about people, Ziara Murid, Ziara Madina Bay, but at the same time, um, he or she is having this uh, difficulty, not financially, but uh, yakin in, in traveling to Medina Bay for Ziara. So she is asking what uh, explanation and uh, inspiring words from you and what is the wisdom of the Ziara and everything that is in the world. Anyway, Ziara for the sake of Allah, it's good. And sound hadith in Sahih Muslim, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned a guy who was traveling to a village to visit <coughs> a brothers. So an angel came to him with the form of a human being and asked him, where are you going? He said, I'm going to this village. What are you looking for? He said, I want to go to visit a brothers for, for the sake of Allah. He, the, the angel asked him, do you, do you have any business with him? Do you have any business with him? You have money you want to increase? He said, no. I just love him for the sake of Allah. And the angel tell him that I am Rasulullah ilayk. I'm the messenger from Allah to you to show him that he's not even human being to tell you that Allah love you because you love your brother for the sake of Allah. So if this is the case, so we love for the sake of Allah, we visit for the sake of Allah, that we have, Allah will love us for, for that. And if Allah love you, he will guide you, he will help you, he will you know, assist you in all your efforts. So may Allah make our brotherhood and our relationship, our ziyara, you and your ziyara to us, may Allah make all that for the sake of Allah. Amen. 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 Uh, sincere murid insha'Allah we read for him one fatiha three times a day class and three times a fatiha fatiha
we're here to Torino you know, all our way uh, right now. Amen. 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 I remember for you on behalf of Sheikh Ibrahim and Sheikh Melitijani. Amen. Amen.